Hi, I'm Mike Merchant, Urban Entomology Specialist for Texas AgriLife Extension Service, and my report today is on a workshop I attended yesterday in East Columbia, Texas. The workshop focused on better understanding of a new ant pest for Texas called the raspberry crazy ant. At the moment, this ant is known to science by the not-so-elegant name of Parachikina species near pubans. The form of this name tells us that insect taxonomists, those people who give names to ants and other little things, haven't quite figured out what to call this critter. It looks like another ant called Paratrichina pubens, but maybe not. In Texas, it has simply come to be known as the raspberry crazy ant, named after the pest control professional who discovered it. All of the crazy ants are so named because of their fast, erratic movement, and the raspberry crazy ant is no exception. Very quick on their feet, we're seeing what these little guys look like in a natural setting in a small rural community along the lower reaches of the Brazos River in southeast Texas. Participants in this outing represent county extension agents, agricultural regulators, ant researchers, local politician, and fish and wildlife officials all came to get a first-hand view of what this ant looks like in the wild and what we might be able to do about it. We need a few gonna be in the, in the car okay. <laughs> So Mike, this has to go on YouTube, and I want to see how many hits on these man-eating ants. Okay. Man -eating. <laughs> I thought about laying down, cover myself in some honey or something like that. Fortunately, this ant does not sting, but that's about the only good news. As soon as I stand too long in one spot here in the woods, I find myself slowly covered with ants. A moment ago, I felt ants crawling into one of my ears. Where this ant originated is still a mystery, but most experts think it came from the Caribbean or northern South America. While Florida has a similar ant called the Caribbean crazy ant, some researchers feel the Texas ant is something different. As of the summer of 2009, the raspberry crazy ant is only confirmed from 11 counties in the vicinity of Houston, Texas. Dr. Paul Nestor, organizer of the workshop, also works at the site that we explored on our field trip. Treatments we have access to it, whether it be baiting or any other specific treatment. So right now, uh, we're still on the learning curve, and but we do have a nice location that we can uh, uh, use to test some of the products that are coming around the around the bend. Danny McDonald is a researcher working for the Center for Urban and Structural Pest Control. Um, we've been uh, coming out here every Monday since April and I'm tracking the uh, movement of the uh, crazy ant throughout the community up the road, uh, looking at ant diversity, uh, the impact of the uh, treatment with advanced carpenter ant bait, uh, how much suppression we're getting with that. They are extreme nuisance, of course, inside, coming inside your house, uh, just, just swarming everything that you have. I mean, these ants are killing honeybees. We rely on honeybees for uh, pollination. Our field trip takes us to several homes located along the Brazos River. This particular site has had these ants for approximately two years. Another ant, the fire ant, has been here for 20 to 30 years. When asked which ant is worse, people will quickly tell you they'd rather have the fire ants. So we'll see what good that does. Okay, well let's just feel free. Uh, we're going to walk up here and look around. And uh, uh, he did say there's a lot of ants over that wood pile, but he's seen a couple of copperheads over there too, so I don't think we're going to go by the wood pile today. So. As we look around the garage, we encounter something that even pest management professionals rarely see. A ring of dead ants, several inches wide. The group debates whether this is natural mortality or a result of the pest control the homeowner has done around this building. This is all dead ants. Probably so. Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but the question was, ant bodies. Are the dead ants as a result of the barrier treatment? I think I see them in both cases. Both cases. It's just dead ants. And just Dr. Bart Dries, longtime expert on fire ants, discusses some of the limitations of our spray and pray approach to crazy ant control. The population, you kill a lot of ants. So we're not saying these things don't kill ants, but in terms of managing a landscape level population, it's not sufficient. These people start buying and applying products every day and that's not cost effective and probably really environmentally unsound and that's why we're sending people to professional pest control operators. It's clear from our discussions that controlling this ant is not for amateurs. 
Tom Raspberry probably knows as much about the control of the Raspberry Crazy Ant as anyone. As you talk with him, you get the impression that he's happy with the role he's played as Ant Discoverer, even if he's not happy with the Ant itself. Infestation. I knew it was an ant that I'd never seen, uh, but I didn't, didn't pay that much attention to it until the next year when the populations got extremely high. And that's, I think the best we can do at this point is uh, do, a, do enough research to uh, figure out what makes them tick, uh, their temperature tolerances, their reproductive cycles, uh, all the information that you need to control any insect, uh, we pretty much don't have any of that information. The full impact of the raspberry crazy ant has yet to be seen. One thing that's obvious, in areas where this ant is found, it can be seen everywhere. Rarely have I seen an insect so abundant as these ants. They seem to be on every twig, leaf, and tree. And even though we're being told that the ants probably don't harm birds, the woods seem strangely silent. Maybe it's just our paranoia. From those who have lived with the ants the past few years, we learn that there will be even more ants than what we're seeing now in a couple of months. One thing we all agree on, there is much yet to learn about this insect. And if we want to get ahead of them, we had better get started now. For more information about crazy ants, go to the Center for Urban and Structural Entomology's website at the address shown here. In addition to information about identification and control, you will find videos and forms for reporting suspected crazy ant infestations. If you suspect you may have encountered these ants, you will have to collect some and mail them to the center using the form on this site. Thanks for joining me on this short report on the crazy ant workshop.